Hi, everyone. I'm Lei. Welcome to Lei's Real Talk. It's great to resume my Saturday night live stream. I hope everyone is, has enjoyed their weekend so far. All right. So let's talk about um, why the next few months uh, are going to be a stress test for Xi Jinping to maintain order within the CCP household. Um, after attending G20, uh, China's fearless leader left Indonesia and headed for Thailand to attend the APEC meeting. And the, I think the pandemic must have taken a toll on him. After a tough talk with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, uh, he became headline news again by refusing a handshake with the Thai Prime Minister. I don't know if you have seen it, uh, but here I have, um, I have a video to show you. Here we go. Oh, yeah, it's it's playing. Let's see. It's going to play again. Here we go. After he he extends his hand and Xi Jinping walks away, he looks, <laughs> the prime minister didn't know what to do, so he touched his nose. Here we go again. Okay, so... Anyways, that's just a little bit, I think, fun um, to show you. So he, at the G20 and APAC, he held a number of meetings with other heads of state, and he mentioned reforms and reopening of China. I think Beijing is eager to attract foreign investments and keep the economic ties growing. But what I like to say is it's too early to tell where uh, the Chinese economy is heading. I'm afraid that the next few months can be chaotic for Xi for a good number of reasons. So I'm going to talk about um, why the next few months will be will be hard, and um, uh, from from the following perspectives. First is um, I'll give you an update on Foxconn. Right, since the Foxconn um, exodus, the iPhone factory is having a hard time recruiting people. And then in other cities, Chinese people didn't get excited over the relaxation of zero COVID. And I'll talk about the confusion on a part of the local government, uh, as well as the division COVID has caused in, in Chinese society. Um, and, and of course, there's a, the, the COVID outbreaks in China are escalating. And the most importantly, I will talk at the end about the disconnect in Xi Jinping's government right now. Uh, that's unprecedented um, during the transition period. Um, <clears throat> so all of these present a serious challenges for him in the next few months. And he, if he's not careful, things can turn chaotic. So I think it's going to be a difficult winter. Um, let me first talk about the aftermath of Foxconn. So since the massive exodus, it's been, th what, three weeks now? Yes, three weeks. What has happened at the world's largest iPhone factory that produces um, mostly iPhone Pro and uh, Pro Max, right? Um, Apple said on November 7th that the iPhone Pros and Pro Maxes will, will see delay in delivery. Because of um, because of China's COVID restrictions, and Apple said that the delay can be up to one month, but I think it can be longer. Because after the mass walkout at the end of October, the, the iPhone manufacturer um, encouraged workers to stay um, to stay on by offering them three hundred yuan a day, even if they don't work, even if they are subject to quarantine. So 300 yuan a day is, is a lot. That's like um, $40, 40 some dollars, $45 for doing nothing. And that could be substantial money. Um, but people still left on a large scale. Right? Sources from China has uh, have estimated about 100,000 people have, have left. And that's out of what, 250,000? workforce they have at the at the factory um a social media account called um financial code eyes like Jing Lenye, had a post on november 16th that a family member who was offered 400 yuan a day to do the cleaning work at foxconn found that there was basically no one in the dormitory 
And either people all left or they were sent away for quarantine. But instead, a group of CCP uh, grassroots officials and vet Chinese veterans have been hired. And this is confirmed. Hold on, let me share the. Let me share this. I just stream. Oh, uh, yeah, the, here's here's the post. Um, so there are posts basically saying, um, um, the the factory Foxconn is, um, or the local government is encouraging grassroots officials to to go work at Foxconn's assembly line, and they're paid at least thirteen thousand yuan per month. And those with outstanding performance would be given priority for promotion. Um, here, here's, here's another one. Um, and well, the promotion obviously is not at Foxconn. Uh, the promotion is in the government. So it's a very generous offer. Thirteen thousand is um, is a little under two thousand uh, two thousand dollars. So it's not a small amount. Um, so these government officials basically are offered two two salaries, right? They have they 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 get paid for for their regular um, job in the government, and then in addition, they are offered what thirteen thousand yuan a month um, additional salary, and that's like two thousand dollars more, and they also get the opportunity to be promoted within the government. So that's a very generous offer. Um, but it looks like the authorities um, are having a hard time finding people, filling the job vacancies. So obviously the officials at the grassroots level didn't, didn't take up the offer. And South China Morning Post reported that Foxconn is hiring veterans to work at the factory. Um, according to the official Henan Daily, the first batch of new employees have arrived at Foxconn's um, Zhengzhou factory. As of the evening of the 12th of November, Foxconn Zhengzhou received 20,000, nearly 20,000 new hires. And they would be quarantined for three days before going on the assembly lines. And if they stay on the job for four days, they will receive a bonus of up to 16, uh, 1,600 yuan. So what does this tell us? It means that after two weeks, of the staff meltdown, Foxconn was only able to fill uh, at, at most 20% of the vacancy. And the people doing the job are mostly, and they're not the regular people that they would attract. They were mostly CCP carders and veterans. And the, the front end loaded bonus tells me that many of these people probably didn't last many days. Otherwise, they wouldn't offer them a bonus after four days, right? Um, so government officials aren't very motivated to take the opportunities. But what about all the unemployed young people, right? The college grants that aren't able to find jobs. Um, didn't we see that the official unemployment rate for Chinese, new, for Chinese young people is at 20%? And that's official number. The real number could be higher. So what about all these young people who... Who don't have a job, who are looking for, for a job, why don't they take up the, the opportunity? And also the people who lost lost their jobs during the pandemic, shouldn't they be interested in taking the generous offer? No. I think Beijing's heavy-handed zero COVID policy and the propaganda has taken a toll on people's perception of the public health crisis. The draconian measures and the lack of transparency made people afraid of COVID more, you know, more than necessarily. And on top of that, Chinese people in general don't trust what the government tells them. So that they would rather stay safe than sorry. And this isn't just at the Foxconn factory in Zhengzhou. After the 20th Party Congress, Beijing issued a policy called the 20 Measures. It's an administ administrative measure to optimize COVID prevention with the goal to stop those one-size-fits-all stringent controls by local governments. Many people interpret it as a prelude to Beijing's um, officially ending zero COVID. Shi Jiazhuang was the first Chinese city that announced COVID tests are not required for taking public transportations. 
um, and that the city um, stopped massive public COVID tests, and they, they actually closed the citywide free test sites. And if people want to take COVID tests, they would go to hospitals to pay for the test themselves. Um, and, this, and then the single test is 16 yuan, and then the batch test is 3 yuan. Um, many people say Shijiazhuang was the first city um, that adopted a coexistence approach and people are watching how it went, but it didn't go very well because strange, strange things happened. Um, if I may show you a, um, a video, oh, we, could, we could play that video in the background. Here we go, share. So this is, this is a video um, taken from Shi Jiazhuang on the first day of the, look at how, how long the lines are, or the line is, uh, for people who, who would pay to do COVID tests. That's amazing, right? And then it's like endless, all these people. And, um, and then you have other, other videos, you have other social media videos to show the big whites, um, the guards, that are trying to persuade people to leave, um, tell them not to do the COVID tests. So this is this is very interesting, right? So now you tell people you don't have to do tests, but people want to do the tests. Let me end this here. So why why is that? And oh, and also in addition, um People didn't go out to work, and then you have so many students, parents call the school to call sick, um, and they, parents don't want to send their kids to, to go to school. And some school teachers actually kind of collaborated with the parents because the school teachers or the school administrators also didn't want students to come back because they didn't feel safe. So people are saying that the communities were more quiet or quieter than during the lockdowns because people didn't go anywhere. Um, so what has happened, right? So the extensive zero COVID policy has unfortunately left a permanent dent on, chi on Chinese people's mind or on China's economy because the propaganda has changed people's mentality and outlook. Um, I think Beijing's propaganda, you know, on zero COVID or on, on, on the pandemic in general in the past three years is not causing backfire. Chinese have been brainwashed so badly that it's hard for them to believe that they can coexist with COVID. In addition, they don't trust the government and, and, and are suspicious of the government's intention to end the lockdown. And this would be a huge price um, for Beijing to pay economically because it takes time for people to start feeling uh, normal again. And, um, and before that happens, before people start to feel normal again, China's labor market will suffer. So I think the next few months would be hard because China right now is seeing the highest incidence rate in months. Um, as Beijing is reporting daily new cases over 20,000, which we haven't seen in months. So for example, uh, yesterday, China reported 24,000 cases of which Guangdong has more than a third with 9,600 cases, followed by Chongqing, Henan, which is the province uh, where Foxconn iPhone factory is located and Inner Mongolia. So Guangzhou, so, Henan, you know, Henan is where the iPhone factory is. And then Guangzhou is a major manufacturing base for China and its economy will suffer, right? Will, will further deteriorate. So, and in Guangzhou, residents have, you, you probably have seen videos where, um, where, where do I have that pictures? Here, here we go. Yeah, um, you have seen residents toppled barriers set up by the authorities, and and people are openly revolting in defiance of the of the government orders. Um, people were in lockdowns. P people in lockdowns without food and without supplies. When they found out that the supplies 
uh, and food donated to them were sold for money by public health officials. People got mad. And that's one of the reasons for the, for the protest or uprising. And this revolt took place in a neighborhood um, that has many of the out-of-town laborers who don't have a lot of savings and who rely on manufacturing jobs to make a living. Um, but interestingly, not everyone in Guangzhou uh, are sympathetic for these people. Some There were public debates on Chinese social media. Some local people uh, seriously accused these people for not observing government rules and causing outbreaks. Um, so the public protest has caused a division among Chinese. As much as zero COVID doesn't make people happy, but many brainwashed Chinese still support it because they feel safe that way. Um, the second challenge that the second challenge that uh, Xi Jinping faces is the inconsistent and random reactions by local government to deal with the outbreaks. And it has caused so much confusion among local, um, local people. F for one thing, the central government's wobbling position on zero COVID has made it difficult for local gov uh, officials to figure out what to do because the People's Daily, you know, for the, for the past week has published articles back and forth. You know, one day they would uh, publish an article on, um, on the next stage of um, public health COVID prevention without mentioning zero COVID. Um, so people assume that that's the end of zero COVID. And then the next day it will come out with three articles to say, no, we're still, uh, we're still following zero COVID. So this back and forth, this wobbling positions is causing the local government very confused. And some China experts say it's, it's because the central government doesn't know what to do and they don't want to give any clear indications, um, and that it's it's up to it's up to the, maybe it's because there's internal power struggles, or or maybe because Xi Jinping hasn't completely made up his mind. But the local government feel like their hands are tied; they don't know what to do, and this is this has caused so much confusion. Um, I will show you a chart that I thought is very interesting that I translate. From a Chinese, a, from a Chinese, uh, here we go. Oh, he, here's the chart. So th this is a, originally a Chinese chart. So there are four scenarios, right? So you have um, the two columns is if there's an outbreak versus there's no outbreak. So, and then if you are local government officials, do you end lockdowns or do you continue lockdowns? So people figure out there are like two possible outcomes, right? Whether the economy will collapse and two, whether the official who makes the decision, whether his job, whether he will be able to hold on to his job, right? So these are the two um, kind of consequences people are calculating. So, so if you look at, so let's look at if there's an outbreak and if you end lockdowns, right? The economy will collapse. The economy will collapse anyways, right? And then, and then, um, because you know, because there's an outbreak and there's there's panic and you know, uh, and then regardless, and then people, the official will lose the job, okay? And then if you continue the lockdown, the economy will collapse too, right? But the official will not lose his job. There's no job change. Now let's look at the, the right column. Um, when there's no outbreak and, and if you end lockdowns, the economy will be stable, um, but the official has no job change either. You don't get a promotion and you don't lose your job. But if there's no outbreak and you continue to lock down, the economy will for sure collapse, but the official may be awarded and this is like most <laughs> counterintuitive because, because the official can say, look, because I support zero COVID, because I locked down, there's no outbreak, right? Because of my great effort in um, adhering to the zero COVID policy and by continuing lockdowns. And so I prevented outbreak from happening in my, 
in my um, territory. So yeah, he may be awarded. So th this is the Chinese interpretation. I'm not saying I agree with this or disagree, but I thought it's really funny. Uh, so I translated it for you. So based on this scenario, the local officials, um, because they're scratching their heads trying to figure out what to do, right? So they figure out, okay, um, I need to I need to do the lockdowns, right? Um, I need to do a lockdowns. That's basically a much safer, you know, that's a safer bet for me uh, than stopping the lockdowns. So I just thought this is really funny. I want to share that with you. So, for example, the Guangzhou, just to show you how confused the local government um, is, you know, Guangzhou, the, the, the province that I mentioned that had the most outbreak, that has more than one third of the cases, um, it reacted to the public protest. It issued two changes of policies within one day on the 15th, on November 15th. Uh, in the morning, the, the government announced cancellation of mass COVID tests and change it to uh, a, a voluntary basis. But the policy didn't last a few hours and they change it back in the afternoon and restarted the mass tests again. That just shows you how, how confused they are. Um, now there's another incident that's happening in Guangzhou that I, I don't know if you are aware. And this is like went viral. Um, two women, basically what happened was two women went downstairs to get a takeout order. One wore a mask and the other didn't. Um, they somehow got into a heated argument with the public health guards, right? The men wearing mask. Um, one of the women said that she was gonna call the police. And in the end, uh, the two women were tied up. Their hands and feet were bonded together. And this picture, and, and they got into the argument. And this picture went viral in China because the this is the woman whose hands and feet were tied up, but she refused to lie down. The the you could see the other woman was lying down next to her. Um, the other woman in black wore a mask, but this woman um, did not wear a mask, but she refused to lie down, and so she but she couldn't stand. So she knelt down um, with her hands and feet tied up. And this picture went viral in China. Um, so people were shocked. People were shocked to, to find out that um, I, people asked the question, how could the guys who were um, only grassroots community health, public health workers or even volunteers had the authority to do what law enforcement does, right? And most there are just community of, or grassroots officials. What authorities do they have to tie up these two women? There were so many ways they could have handled the, the, the dispute. I mean, they could have just hand the other woman a mask or tell the other woman who wore a mask to go home and get a mask for her friend before they, before they go anywhere. Um, but they didn't. Instead, they exercised their power, and um, and then and then did this did this terrible thing. Um, but what I, I mean, th this obviously caused a public uproar on Chinese social media. People are saying that Cultural Revolution um, is returning to China um, because during Cultural Revolution, people are being humiliated. I mean, these women are being put on public display for a while. So, um, so they say this is cultural revolution because people are being put on public display just, just, you know, to be humiliated. But what I want to say is this is actually, this is not a random <clears throat> act of atrocity. It is part of CCP's policy because here you have the document. Okay. This is the basis of the, of the policy. So in, um, in July, last summer, 2021, CCP's, uh, State Council issued this opinion, right? It's called the Opinions on Strengthening Grassroots Governance, governance, governance System or Government Capacity. Um, this policy intends to enhance grassroots organizations and empower them with the authorities to carry out duties. 
um, that municipal government or local government um, or governments are unable to do. And the goal is really to turn people to watch each other at the community level. And this is exactly what these men did, right? They were exercising their power bestowed by the central government to them to reprimand, to reprimand these two women in the name of public health. And these people may be neighbors who live in the same building or live on the same street, but one will work for the government and exercise great power over the other. And this is what Mao did during the Cultural Revolution, turning people against each other. And, and this policy has been rolled out for over a year now, since last July. And I think we'll see more and more this type of drama taking place across China. Although Beijing's intent may be to use this grassroots um, organizations or <clears throat> um, what do you, I don't know what do you call them. They're not even organizations. They're just individuals who work for the government at the grassroots level. Um, the Beijing's goal is to achieve stability, but it, it may just achieve the opposite results because it will solve or it has solved discord among people and turn people against each other. And this type of setup would turn a small dispute into a national chaos because there's no checks and balances in the system to manage these individuals at the grassroots level. Um, the protests that we've seen in Guangzhou, right, right where we've seen like, massive people uh, went to the streets, they, they, they toppled the, the, the barricades. They, they, were, they may not be protesting zero COVID. What they were protesting is the abuse of power and corruption by the local health officials at the grassroots level because these people were hungry. They did not have food or supplies, but these grassroots people sold um, the food and supplies, donated to these people for money. And that's what people were protesting. So this type of grassroots CCP system I think can paralyze the entire municipal government um, if the conflicts get out of control. All right, so I just mentioned the, the, the second point. Um, another major problem that can turn Chinese society into chaos um, is, is um, the dysfunctional, the, the, the partially dysfunctional central government or the, dis the partially paralyzed central government. Because after the party Congress, um, let me come back, after the party Congress, <clears throat> the CCP has, we have seen something that has never happened before. Um, you know, the CCP has two leadership systems. One is the party leadership, one is the government leadership. Right. So, so for example, Xi Jinping is the head of the party. He's also the head of the um, um, the country. Right. The president, Li Keqiang, is a member of the Politburo Standing Committee member. Current, I mean, in the previous party congress, um, but he's also the premier. So there are two two systems. They have two job titles, but because of the two. The, the major personnel changes, the major shuffling that Xi Jinping did at the party Congress, we have a disconnect between the party leadership and the government leadership right now. Uh, and this has not happened before. So I'll show you the slides. So for example, right now within the Chinese government, um, so we have the current premier, Li Keqiang, and the current executive vice premier, as well as the head of the People's Congress, which is Li Zhanshu, and also the head of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, Wang Yang. They have all become ordinary CCP members since October 23rd, the last day of the party Congress. They no longer hold major party positions, right? And then the only vice premier who is still in the party central committee is Hu Chunhua. Moreover, the current seven Politburo standing committee members, except Xi Jinping, the other six have no official government jobs. So they only hold CCP 
party jobs, which is the Politburo Standing Committee member. And they, ha they, have, they, they have no government jobs, like Li Qiang, who was the party secretary of Shanghai, has already left that position. So, I mean, he, everyone says he's going to be the next premier, but he is not yet, right? So you have, he does not hold any government jobs. And then you have Li Keqiang, who's in that position, but no longer hold any party jobs. So there's a disconnect between the party leadership and the government leadership. And then you have another situation is you have um, people who hold important positions um, that manage the economy. For example, Liu He, who is um, the highest ranking, um, I think Xi Jinping is num number one economic advisor or the highest ranking um yeah, uh, high, highest ranking official in charge of uh, foreign trade. I mean, he didn't go to the APEC meeting, right? Because he's going to retire. He, he, he is no longer part of the central committee. He's not even um, in the, on the alternate party member list. I mean, the central committee party member list. Same with uh, Guo Shuqing, who is the head of the, um, the Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission. Um, the guy who is the finance minister, Liu Kun, and Yi Gang, the guy who is the head of the Central Bank of China, they're all going to retire. They are no longer part of the Central uh, Committee or the alternate, alternate committee. So we don't know who, who, who are going to replace them. We won't know until next spring. So you have this whole a whole class of government officials that are outgoing and we don't know who are coming or at least they have not been announced. So for right now, the, the Chinese government or at least the part that deals with the economy, right, that are in limbo because they are not, people don't know. You know how in, in, the, in, the, in the CCP's um, structure, people are not going to do anything until they know who their boss, who their bosses are. So I don't think anyone is doing anything right now, <laughs> right? Because they can't, they don't want to make any mistakes. So people are going to be waiting for a few months um, and that will make the CCP, the Chinese government uh, effective for the next few months. Um, but we know this is a crucial time uh, because there are so many economic crises on the horizon um, but for right now, the disconnect in the central government will will be harmful. And will this harm be remedied next spring? We don't know yet. We'll see. And also, year-end is the time for Chinese companies to do layoffs, right? They, they usually do the layoffs um, before the year-end so that they can save money on the year-end bonus. So with the current economy, there will be a lot of uh, people who will be losing their jobs. Um, so to summarize, with the way Chinese economy is going, with the way COVID cases are, um, are on the rise or being on the rise, and the confusion over government policies and the division among Chinese people over zero COVID, those who support it and those who, who, who are against it, and the conflict um, at the grassroots level, and, and on top of that, a semi-dysfunctional government I think I think Xi Jinping will have a tough time going through this winter. Um, so, so those of you who are thinking about uh, going back to China to um, to resume business as usual, I think you should hold it off until next spring, because we may see some uh, chaos in China during winter. Yeah, that's that's my presentation. All right. Let's see. Do I have any questions? Okay. Um, let me let me go over the super questions from Travel with Love. Thank you for your insightful shows. Thank you. All right. And uh, K two. Do you think she is getting accurate information on his bureaucracy, or they tell him what they think he wants to hear? Um, I think that's a very good question. I think he is not getting, I think he, 
it's it's wrong to say that he's not getting any accurate information. I think he's getting some accurate information, but he's certainly not getting the entire picture. Um, I mean, when you're not getting the entire picture, let's say even if 50% of the information you get is, is accurate, but that's already bad enough for you to make a wrong decision because your decision will be based on only 50% you know, the situation that's only half true, right? So it's it's already bad. So I don't want to say he is not getting any accurate information, but the fact that he's not getting all the accurate information is already detrimental. And yeah. From Ma Michael Masek. Thank you. Well, thank you, Michael, for, for your um, donation. And from Matthew Dolman. Some Chinese I have spoken to describe the relaxation of COVID restriction as tangping. I think you meant tangping. This seems really odd choice of words. Am I missing something? Yeah, that's actually tangping means lying flat, laying flat, doing nothing, like giving up, basically giving up. Um, that's the result. What, what you described is true, but that's the result of the propaganda. Because the CCP's propaganda has always accused America and the West uh, for their, you know, do nothing approach to COVID, right? Uh, the coexistence co approach. So the CCP has done, has laughed and ridiculed um, the approach taken by the rest of the world. So people have this deep perception that when you stop zero COVID, it's like you're giving up your fight with the virus. And people are scared. Yeah, that's where it comes from. And that's why I think CCP is stuck in a situation where it, 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 it does not know what to do. If it doesn't stop COVID, zero COVID, its economy is going to die. But it does stop it. Chinese people are going to resist it. Um, so it's going I think this is going to cause so much chaos and confusion and, and social unrest. And it will take a quite a while. I don't even know how they're going to iron it out. So this is, I think this is a major threat that the West has not realized. Um, and this is, this is happening. Any change, any thoughts on the ch changes in the military hierarchy? Um, the last, the last I've talked about is how there is, um, I think there are a lot of people unhappy about his appointment with uh, the two vice chairmen of the military commissions. I think I talk about that in, in one of my last live stream events because one is because um, one is over 72 years old and he his, his you know, Xi Jinping broke the CCP's own protocol in keeping him on board only because he trusts him. And the other um, has been promoted through like a like a rocket. Right. He, he was promoted faster than a rocket. And, and also because Xi Jinping, um, you know, knows him from way back when he was in Fujian province. So in the military, you know, the, ofi the officers, um, like there are different factions and the officers are loyal to their factions. So uh, when Xi Jinping promotes only the people that he, he trusts, then a lot of the officers, you know, younger officers felt feel like their opportunities are being left out. So there is resentment within the military. Um, I think I talked about that in one of my lives. Yeah. And as a result, um, he had to, you know, he had to do something. Um, he had to do something. Didn't he assume his fourth job title, becoming the, the head of the, the, joint, the Joint Operation Command Center? Um, so that, you know, this is to support his, his um, newly promoted vice chairman. All right. Thank you, William Warren. Uh, let me see. Do I have any questions? Uh, from, let me see. Let me see. Uh, from Metal... Hamster, I have a few friends in rural China. They message me regularly asking if I'm okay and that 
lying flat is a bad idea. Still much feared around COVID. Yeah. <laughs> you, it, the way you describe it is, is very true, right? So Chinese families thought for the past years saw that living in America is like living in a, uh, in danger, like, uh, the, because the Chinese propaganda has described, you know, the situation in America as so bad, so dangerous, like COVID, you know, is out of control, um, uh, that um, that America is doomed because of you know the the the, the coexistence coexi approach. So yeah, so that happens when I talk to uh, my contact in China. They they express the same concern. You know, are you okay? Don't go anywhere. Don't you know? Don't get near anyone. And if you ask them how are you doing in China, they say oh we're you know we're 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 good. Um, but anyways, yeah, they do. So this. The three-year propaganda is causing backfire right now. So even when Beijing wants to get rid of zero COVID, they probably can't, you know, yeah. Um, from, from Carlo Durian, will the zero COVID policy be Xi Jinping's great leap forward, Mao's campaign that eventually weakened his power? Many people are drawing that a comparison, you know, but yeah. And I think it looks more and more similar. Um, it, it is, it, it, it looks like that because the Great Leap Forward um, movement was so disastrous that Mao was pushed um, to the sideline not to be dealing with the economy, but Instead, he launched, right, he launched the war against um, India. And then a few years later, he launched the Cultural Revolution to take down Liu Shaoqi and Deng Xiaoping, the two people who he put in charge of the economy. So, um, so that's why people are saying that the end of zero COVID may not be good for geopolitics because would Xi Jinping do what Mao did, right? When his, when his campaign failed, he launched a war. So, so I see more and more people drawing comparisons between, yeah, the zero COVID and the great, great leap forward movement. They do look similar. Citizen, Lei, what can the outside world do to help Chinese people? Um, I think the most benign way is, I think knowledge is power. Information, let, let people know what's really happening. Um, just by, because they're not, they don't have access to truthful information, right? Even the, the Chinese living, um, living in, in the U S or in Canada or in other parts of the world may still be subject to, um, the brainwashing or propaganda coming from China, because a lot of the Chinese language media outside China are still, you know, CCP propaganda. So talk to your Chinese friends. He, you know, outside China and also inside China, give them truthful information. I think that's the most peaceful and yet most powerful um, thing that you can do. So I think knowledge is power and information, uncensored information is what the CCP fears the most, but what the Chinese needs the most, right? So I always say, if you want Chinese market, Right? We talked about how multinational companies want to go to China because they want Chinese market. But if you do what the CCP want you to do, that does not mean you will have the Chinese market because the CCP is not interested in... If you want the Chinese market, then you do what Chinese people want. And what do they want right now? They want uncensored information. They want to know what's really happening in the world. They want to know what's really happening in China. So I think the most peaceful and yet powerful way to help Chinese is to give them uncensored information, truthful information. Michael, your English is superb. You pronounced my name correctly. Oh, I try. I make so many embarrassing mistakes in pronouncing people's names. Um, so, all right. Um, let me see. 
okay, thank you. Let me see. Um, I think uh, from Batin acid, I think it's important that outside observers are diligently reporting facts and not embellishing the situation. Reality is already frightening enough. Inaccurate reporting feeds the nationalists. I, I agree. I think um, let's try to remove our emotions from facts. Just give people the facts. Um, as long as facts are presented, you know, rationally, I think anyone can accept them. All right. Um, you have to be from Benji C. You have to be tactful when talking about the truth with Chinese people in China, though. I agree. Yeah, because they're um, so jaded, right? They, they, yeah. But I think just do, you know, do what you can. I think as long as you you're doing it from their perspective, as long as we don't have any any agenda, we don't want we don't want to convince them something, but just telling them what we know, um, I think people would appreciate. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So I've talked for a good forty eight minutes. If people don't have any other questions for me. Uh, I'll call it the end of the night. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope this is helpful. I don't think anyone is talking about this. Uh, I think people are talking about bits and pieces of information, but nobody has compiled, um, everything like I did for China, especially what's happening within the central government, because I do see the disconnect between the party leadership and the government leadership. And I think right now, uh, a lot of the CCP officials are not doing anything because they don't want to make any mistakes, right? They just want to follow the leader. And if the leader have not announced who the next, who his direct reports are or will be, people are not doing anything. And and so I think this, this is very important for the West to know. All right. Thank you, everyone. Good night. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.